You can trust us to stick to you through thick and thin, to the bitter end. And you can trust us to keep any secret of yours closer than you keep it to yourself. But you cannot trust us to let you face trouble alone, and go off without a word. We are your friends, Frodo. Hey everyone, Yoiston here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth. Happy Tolkien Reading Day, too. For today, March 25th, we celebrate the downfall of Sauron and the start of the new Gondorian year. Together, along with many of my friends and fellow Tolkien YouTubers, we are releasing extra videos as a part of a collaboration hosted by Timbo Took, the most famousest of hobbits on YouTube. With this collaboration this year, we're also raising awareness and support for the charity Save the Children. This is a great charity that helps children all around the world, and if you wish to donate alongside us, a link to it will be in the description below. As set by the Tolkien Society, this year's theme is love and friendship, so I will link many videos on such themes in the description and cards, and today we will be discussing some of the greatest friendships in Middle-earth. Now I am just one man making one video, and there are many, many great friendships in the Legendarium. I dare say you could find tell of at least one friendship in every chapter of the Legendarium. Rather, today's video will be more subjective, and this list will not be in any particular order of importance, but rather probably in the order of chronology. But I do just want to speak to some of the friendships that I find to be most impactful. I'll say it right now that I will definitely miss a lot of friendships, so let me know your favorite Tolkienian friendships in the comments below. My friends, thank you all so much for joining me today. Let's begin our tale. Fingon and Mithros. Of course, in Tolkien's works, many familial connections breed close ties, and for that reason I'm going to generally not speak to too many of the close bonds between close kin, brothers for instance, but for these first few ones, some of these are friendships between cousins. While not perhaps the first great friendship in Middle-earth, the one between Fingon and Mithros is very notable and inspiring. We see that, even during the horrendous atrocities of the first kinslaying and Feanor's burning of the ships at Lascar, Fingon and Mithros were still good friends. In the former, Fingon aided his cousin and Mithros' family without question, questions which would have averted some of the sorrow and death in this battle. And in the latter, Mithros wished to send ships back to his cousin and his cousin's people, but was rebuked by Feanor his father, and these ships were burned. Fingon would be forced to cross the Helcaraxe, not knowing that his cousin had stuck up for him. I believe Mithros, out of all the things Feanor did, resented his father perhaps most for this one deed, as he held Fingon as a good and loyal friend. Later, of course, Mithros would be captured by Morgoth's servants and pinned by his wrist to a sheer precipice of Thengorodrim, right outside of Morgoth's stronghold of Engband. At this time, Fingolfin's people and those of Feanor had great tension between each other, as Fingolfin's people had recently arrived from over the Helcaraxe. But Fingon set off to save his cousin and best friend anyway. He found him, but with no way up to him, Fingon prepared to take Mithros' life with an arrow, lest Mithros continue to suffer high on the mountain's face. But instead, in this final hour, Fingon was aided by the great eagle Throndor, and he saved his cousin, but was forced to take Mithros' hand with his sword in order to save him. In doing this, this act of friendship, brought the factions of the Noldor back together in many ways, ending much of the tension, and Mithros was able to give his uncle Fingolfin his own claim of the high kingship of the Noldor. This was a great deed, all due to this one friendship. If the Noldor were too busy fighting each other, Morgoth would have easily crushed them early on in the First Age. Turgon and Finrod Turgon, brother of Fingon, called his cousin Finrod, son of Finarfin, his good friend. Together I feel that these two preserved much of the wisdom of the Eldar and that of Valinor within Middle-earth, and the Vala Olmo saw in them the kindness, wisdom, honor, and valor to be kings. Thus Olmo gave to them dreams of their realms and kingdoms to be, Gondolin for Torgon and Nargothrond for Finrod. In many ways, I feel that this friendship was a tie of the bond between their fathers, Fingolfin and Finarfin, and it continued into their own kin and or descendants, for Finrod's sister Galadriel, and Turgon's descendant, Elrond, would continue in their own friendship. Finrod and the Line of Beor Still concerning Finrod, this elf had many friendships with many different folks, such as the dwarves of the Blue Mountains, Thingol of Doriath, and many others, making him my favorite elf, personally. Finrod was also the first of the Noldor to meet men. He befriended the man Beor, who led one of the three houses of the Adain, and this friendship would last even longer than the life of Beor, 
For after he passed, having spent his life with loyalty to the elves, and Finrod especially, Finrod would come to be rescued by Beor's descendant Barahir during the Dagor Bragorlock. And for this rescue by Barahir and his men, Finrod gave to Barahir his ring, which would thusly be named the Ring of Barahir. And Finrod swore to aid him or his descendants when they had need. This oath would be called upon by Baron, son of Barahir. And in friendship, loyalty, and honor to his oath, Finrod would save Baron's life in the dungeons of Sauron and Tol in Gowerhoth. Because of Finrod and his friendship with the line of Beor, the eventual line of Baron and Luthien, the kings of Numenor, and some of the greatest elves and men in the world in later ages would be saved. I should also mention the woman Andraith, who was of the house of Beor, a wise woman who was in love with Finrod's brother Ignor, who was also good friends with Finrod. These two discussed the philosophies and metaphysics of both men and elves, and from a philosophical point of view, this is quite an amazing friendship. Turin and Beleg. I must mention this friendship, even if it ended in sorrow. Turin of the House of Hador would be raised in Doriath, fostered by King Thingol, but he truly learned to fight and survive alongside his friend, one of the greatest archers in Middle-earth's history, Beleg Cuthalion. Later in Turin's story, Beleg would try to get Turin to return to Doriath and to safety, but since that did not work, Beleg did not abandon his friend, and would come to join Turin in protecting the inner lands of Beleriand from orcs. Eventually, through treachery of the dwarf Mim, Turin would be captured by orcs, and Beleg would see him rescued before Turin could be brought to Angband, but in doing so, Turin believed his best friend to be an orc, and he slew him with his own sword. This experience was perhaps one of the darkest to happen in Arda ever, and it changed Turin forever, who carried Beleg's sword in Glakel, which became Gurthang, and Turin made a song in tribute of his best friend soon after Beleg's death. Gilgalad and Elendil Moving now into the Second Age of Middle-earth, we have the friendship of the last High King of the Noldor, Arenian Gilgalad, and the High King of Arnor and Gondor, Elendil. This friendship had preludes, for there were many past Numenorians that Gilgalad had befriended, such as Alderion the Mariner, Kyriotr the Commander, and others. But with Elendil, this friendship was one of mutual respect and mutual need, for they became good friends during and right before the War of the Last Alliance. The beginning of this war and their preparation to march into Mordor saw Elendil bind the Alliance in an oath of friendship, wherein the name of Iru himself was invoked. These two were bound under Uluvitar, and they both found their ends in bringing down the Dark Lord Sauron in combat at the end of the war. Their friendship saw the survival of their people, as they did something only true and good leaders would do. And they did it together. The White Councils Concerning the White Councils of the Second and Third Ages, I have a video which discusses them more. These groups of friends and allies who saw wisdom and great deeds accomplished in both ages. From the creation of Rivendell as the eastern seat of the elves in Eriador, to the later council ousting Sauron from Dol Guldur and learning things about the One Ring, these friendships were crucial to fighting the Shadow. This was made all the more painful when Saruman betrayed his friends among wizards and elves both. Eorl and Kirion. In speaking about friendships, I cannot forget about the King of the Eothaid and the First King of Rohan, and the Steward of Gondor. During a war with Easterlings, Kirion the Steward of Gondor called for aid from the horsemen of the north in Rovanion, whom they shared an ancient friendship with. These folk answered the call, coming to Gondor's aid during the Battle of the Field of Celebrant, and they saved Gondor from the Easterlings. After this, at the tomb of Elendil, Kirion gave Eorl the Young the land of Kelenarthon, which became Rohan, and the two swore oaths of friendship between the kingdoms, promising to come to one another's aid during times of need. And this oath would be fulfilled many times, but especially fulfilled by Theoden, who came to and died upon the field of Pelennor to save Gondor during the War of the Ring. Gandalf and Bilbo While perhaps the hobbit Bilbo Baggins did not originally wish for this friendship a great deal, Gandalf the Grey, who was known to the hobbit Bilbo, befriended him in 2941 of the Third Age, and even helped send him on an adventure to aid the dwarves in retaking the Lonely Mountain from the dragon Smaug, and due to this friendship, Bilbo would do much more for the good of the world than just that, and the hobbits in general were introduced to the larger and more renowned deeds of the world of Middle-earth. Gandalf and Frodo Gandalf would also later befriend Bilbo's cousin, who was adopted by Bilbo, and this friendship would bloom the events of the Lord of the Rings in 3018 of the Third Age and on, and the saving of the world by the ring-bearer Frodo Baggins, 
who was ever aided by Gandalf his friend and mentor, even when Frodo knew it not. The Fellowship of the Ring, but especially Gimli, Legolas, Aragorn, and the Four Hobbits. Speaking of members of the Fellowship, I should say that the friendships between all of the members of the Fellowship of the Ring were quite important for many evident reasons. However, I want to specifically say the friendships between the Four Hobbits, and even more specifically that between Merry and Pippin, and that between Frodo and Sam, were very crucial. We also have the friendships between Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli, the Three Hunters, but especially the friendship between Legolas and Gimli, which saw a symbolic end to many of the conflicts and arguments between dwarves and elves in Middle-earth, even right before the elves left these shores. Aragorn and Eomer. Finally, to top off this list, Aragorn, who would become the High King Elisar of Arnor and Gondor, and Eomer Eadig, who became the King of Rohan, were great friends even before they were kings. During their meetings in Rohan and Gondor during the events of the War of the Ring, these two had great respect for each other, just as their symbolic counterparts of Eorl and Kirion did. After the war, they would rule their kingdoms in solidarity and friendship, renewing oaths of friendship and aid with one another, and they would even strive to make a more peaceful Middle-earth in general, even with the men of the East and South. Before we wrap up this video, let's take a look at the world-building, philosophy, themes, and overall devices of love and friendship in Arda. From the Valar to the Maiar keeping friendship with each other, no matter what differences there were between them and Valinor, to the factions of the Free Peoples keeping friendship amongst each other and within themselves, friendship and love, even and especially that in a platonic sense, but also that in a romantic sense as well, are two very important themes in Tolkien's works. Indeed, these aren't even just themes, but overall feelings of atmosphere within Tolkien's world. Not to compare in terms of quality, but rather to explore this concept in other fictions, when we look at a world like Westeros in Game of Thrones, it's clear that there is a more cynical, but perhaps in some ways a more realistic atmosphere in the world, where love, friendship, and a desire to do good for others does not reign supreme like it does in Tolkien's works. But indeed, I think this is one of the many aspects that makes Middle-earth and Arda at large so appealing. Even from the first meetings of elves and men and so forth, elves extended a helping hand, a hand of friendship and love, rather than overtaking and enslaving the weaker children of Iluvatar among men. Elves were kind and loving to men, rather than becoming as tyrants over them, which is what perhaps would have been a more realistic and cynical route, as elves certainly had the power to do this. This is one of the many examples which speaks volumes to how Tolkien's idealistic world-building made Middle-earth what it was. Indeed, all peoples could get along in the end, for even after the fall of Sauron, while there would still be wars among men, as there always seemed to be, Aragorn and Eomer would strive to make peace with the men of the south and east, people whom always their own kingdoms warred with. We aren't perfect, any of us, and the elves, who were in some ways closer to perfection than us, have long since left these hither shores. But we can strive to become better, to replace the worst parts of ourselves and our history with better parts, and to befriend those whom we have striven against in the past. The peoples of Middle-earth did just this, as they went forth into the greater world of Arda during their stories, and befriended each other on many occasions, in times of peace and desperate war. And in doing so, in uniting in such a way, they outlived the greatest evils the world had ever known in Morgoth, Smaug, Sauron, Saruman, and many others. In a symbolic and thematic sense, but also in a very pragmatic and realistic way, evil was only brought down by the acts of good, friendship, and love for one another. Perhaps our greatest takeaway here, and what we see from this video, both concerning Tolkien's world building and philosophy, we can look at Gandalf's movie only quote from Peter Jackson's The Hobbit. Saruman believes it is only a great power that can hold evil in check, but that is not what I have found. I found it is the small, everyday deeds of ordinary folk that keep the darkness at bay. Small acts of kindness and love. And with that, for now at least, we end our conversation on the greatest friendships in Middle-earth. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you all enjoyed this extra video for Tolkien Reading Day. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button, share this with a friend, and let me know what your favorite friendships of Middle-earth are in the comments below. There are so many great friendships in Tolkien's world, and it was great fun speaking about some of them today. And speaking of friends, please don't forget to check out our playlist of Tolkien Reading Day videos for this year, put together by my buddy Timbo. I think you'll find much to enjoy. 
Thanks to our Valor Tier patrons, Adrian De La Tour, Chris Ordner, Kyle Wetzel, Peter Shepard, Jonathan Putin, and Mark Kralik, Blair Scout, and Merton, John Hume, Sam McBee, Matt Sabatch, Elizabeth Calvert, Maz Gibbs, Ben Gardner, Condar, Reese Jenkins, Adam Petrulik, Kuzan, Brandon Glidden, Molly Sullivan, Daniel Burns, Anthony Harmon, and Dorwin Gray. Thank you so much, and thanks to all of our patrons and to YouTube members. It really means a lot. Please subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the free peoples today. And I'll see you all again on Sunday with a video on the end of the shadow and the age of men to complete our timeline of Arda series. You all are the best, my friends. Thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one.